everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I am here with my March TBR. Now, for those of you who don't know me, March always feels really bizarre. The weather is completely unpredictable up here where I live and the school year just seems to go on forever. There are no breaks and practically no days off in March. And it always feels very much like that Garrison Keillor quote that March is the month that God designed to show people who don't drink what a hangover is like. As such, my reading taste also tends to go everywhere. As of this moment right now, I have no idea what I am going to feel like reading next month. So I've pulled a random assortment of books off of my TBR piles. Hopefully I read them. I might decide to scrap this entirely halfway through the month and read completely different things. I really don't know, but as of right now, this is what I've amassed. Firstly, in terms of classics, the first thing I pulled was the next D.E. Stevenson that I would like to read, which is The Four Graces. Some people feel that this is an extension of the Miss Bunkle storyline. Some people say not. I'm not sure, but I'm going to read it next nonetheless. Since it may or may not be an extension of Miss Bunkle's story, I really haven't looked at what it's about yet, but I would presume it's yet another series of amusing, lighthearted capers in a very small English village in the 1930s, 40s, which is delightful. I also rewatched Notting Hill recently, so I feel the call to pick up some actual Henry James, specifically The Wings of the Dove, which is one of the Henry James novels that Hugh Grant's character mentions. Briefly glancing at the back, this sounds really fantastic. It sounds like it's about matrimonial and economical scheming, probably in the early 20th century, which sounds really, really interesting. I haven't read the back too, too closely in case it does give away spoilers, but I'm intrigued to see what an actual Henry James novel will feel like. I've only read The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, which is not his typical style at all from what I understand. So I'm intrigued to see what this one is like, maybe. I could also end up reading Hard Times by Charles Dickens. I know Katie of Books and Things' Dickens read-along is reading this one or read it very recently. I haven't had the time to really keep up with her schedule, but this is a Dickens that I haven't read yet. And it is quite small and quite manageable, so I might decide to read this instead. This, I believe, looks specifically at the Industrial Revolution and all of its effects on society, people who work in factories, the consequences of materialism, everything that came out of that technological movement, which still feels fairly relevant, so I'm intrigued to see how this goes. Then in terms of nonfiction, my parents and I have recently discovered that we actually do like Miss Marple as long as she's played by I believe Geraldine McEwen. I'll, I'll put a picture of the actress here. We really like her. She's got a little bit more of a spark. There's a little bit more mischievousness. So we've been watching those and really enjoying them. So I thought this month I might actually pick up Agatha Christie's biography written by Lucy Worsley. I watched the first episode of the television show that went along with this biography as well. I still have the other two recorded, but I haven't watched them yet because now I might actually read the book first and then I may revisit those episodes later. Then I have a random assortment of books that just kind of say March to me right now. Firstly, I rewatched the National Theatre's 50th anniversary special, which included a scene from Arcadia, which was not included when they broadcast it on PBS 10 years ago. However, that scene was incredible, so I'd really like to read the whole play now that I've found a copy. Plus it is green for March. Arcadia is a play by Tom Stoppard, which I think is pretty much about 
a variety of academics. Some are in the sciences, one is Lord Byron's biographer, one is a novelist, and they're all in this house together just debating stuff. The topics that they study, the importance of them, life and the universe at large, it's musings on everything. It's Tom Stoppard, isn't it? The line from the scene that they chose to play, however, that really stuck with me was the character who is Lord Byron's biographer looking at the scientist and really blaming him and saying, how did you people con us, i.e. people in the arts, poets, out of all that money and all that status? And why are you so bloody pleased with yourselves? Which, to be honest, is a feeling I've been feeling for a while now, so I would really love to read the whole play. I would also like to read Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. I have loved Nell Stevens's other books, and Marissa of Blatantly Bookish very kindly bought me this for Christmas. This is the story of when Georges Sand and Chopin lived in the Alhambra in Spain for a while, which I still can't believe that they let people do. And it's told from the perspective of the ghost of a young nun who still haunts the Alhambra. And she starts to fall in love with Georges Sand. And it just sounds fantastic. It combines everything that I love, places that I've been, period of history I find really intriguing, plus a really wonderful writing style, I think, if Nell Stevens's other books are anything to go by. I would also like to pick up The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. I loved Hamnet when I finally read it, so I'm really intrigued by this one. I've heard nothing but fantastic things. This is the story of a young girl who really does have a portrait painted of herself, and she was married to a much older, richer man. And there are rumors that he may have poisoned her. And this is Maggie O'Farrell giving us her perspective and her version of events in what might have happened. It sounds fantastic. I've also been trying to find an Irish book to read this month since St. Patrick's Day is in March. Maggie O'Farrell is Irish, but she's Northern Irish, so I'm not entirely sure that that counts. In case it doesn't, I do have two books by Emma Donoghue here. So I could read The Wonder, which also takes place in Ireland, I believe, and is the story of a young nurse who is sent to monitor this young girl who is claiming that she is surviving for weeks and months without eating. And so this nurse is sent in to monitor, to monitor her to find out is this really true? Apparently it's very tense. Knowing Emma Donahue, I'm sure it will be. Part of me really wants to read it and part of me is very frightened of this book, so I may or may not get to it. Or I could read her novel Slammerkin, which I've also been meaning to read for absolute ages, but I'm also slightly frightened of. This is the story of a young woman in the 1740s, I think, who ends up falling into a life of prostitution, and it's her journey trying to work her way in and out of that life. There, and there may or may not be murder involved. Um, it sounds fantastic. It's a time period I love. I think it's going to bring up some really interesting questions related to that time period. But there's something about it that really frightens me, and I can't put my finger on it. A lot of Emma Donahue's work does that. Let me know if you understand what I mean by that, or am I just being completely bonkers. So those are some books that I hope I will get to read in March. Like I said, this pile of possibilities could change entirely in a week's time or two weeks time. I really don't know, but tune in again at the end of March or beginning of April to find out what did I end up reading. Let me know if you have the same terrible time in March, or do you actually have a really good theme, or at least a really solid list of books you know you want to read. I always love hearing from you, but until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.